So we are here, everybody, to talk about Power Platform Snippets. You may see a Lego theme here because that is exactly what you can use these Power Platform Snippets to do. Who am I? I am David Warner with Quisitive, and with me is... April Dunham from Microsoft from the Power Platform Advocacy Team. Yes, and we are both huge fans of all of you and YouTube. So these are QR codes to our YouTube accounts. We would love to have you subscribe and like and smash all of those buttons everywhere. So check us out when you got a minute. Okay, so what is what we're going to talk about today? Well, we're going to cover what are snippets. We're going to go through a little bit of a sample browser tour. We're going to see snippets in action. action, And then we're going to talk about some VS Code tips. And we're going to talk about what our next episode will be because this is a multi-part series. So we want you to be excited for what's coming up. So April, I heard there's this new cool way to copy, view, paste code of controls inside of Power Apps, Copilot, and Automate. Is, is that true? That, that is very true. They're called snippets. So hence the Lego theme. They're kind of like reusable Lego blocks that you can use in your Canvas apps, in Copilot Studio Topics, and Power Automate Desktop to easily get up to speed and create things. So they're actually blocks of code that you just copy and paste pieces of UI or logic into your solutions. Really? Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, what, what is the underlying technology for them? Well, behind the scenes, it's actually using something called YAML or YML. You might have heard it referred to as. Oh, boy. Are we talking about yet another markup language? <laughs> well, you know, y yes, also no. So YAML did originally stand for yet another markup language because back in the day, they just couldn't resist making another config format with colons and indentations and all that. But the use case here is kind of different because instead of marking up text like HTML, YAML is all about data. So structured, readable, and config-friendly data um, that doesn't make your eyes bleed. So that's kind of the purpose of YAML. Interesting. So I, I think what you're trying to say is YAML ain't markup language. <laughs> well, funny that you mentioned that, David, because uh, you know because of the difference of how it's used, the creators they kind of decided to get a little cheeky with it and they changed the the acronym for YAML to mean YAML ain't markup language. Literally, that is the acronym now. What are the odds that I would have had all that ready for a demo? <laughs> Amazing, right? All right, everybody, so let's get into it. What is going to be the demo we're gonna talk about? Let's first start on how you can find some of the sample solution galleries. And April's gonna cover that right now on how to use a couple of them. Yep, so thankfully, we have a snippet repo out there. If you go to aka.ms forward slash power platform dash snippets, you can get right to our snippet repository, and we have all kinds of snippets to choose from. So when you first land here, you'll see several different folders of Copilot Studio snippets that you could copy and paste into your topic. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you go into a topic here, let's just go into any one of these, we can click on this more button, and we can switch to a code editor view, and you guessed it, this is all YAML. So you can share snippets that will go and write complete Copilot Studio topics for you. And we have some of those available here in our snippet repo. We also have Power Automate Desktop snippets, Power Pages even, and of course, Power Apps, which is what we're going to be focusing on today, how we can utilize some of these snippets. So they're all organized into folders. You can kind of browse and see what we have going on here. There's a few really cool ones like gradient backgrounds and even ones that are just individual layouts. So a snippet could be a really sp uh, specific piece of code, like maybe just one image, for example, or it could be an entire screen or a screen layout, like what you're seeing here with this layout funnel example. But what I want to do, let's see how we can use some snippets to help me finish building out my Lego Vault application. So I've built this application. It's pretty cool. It lets me track an inventory of all the Lego sets that I have and that I built. And it's even using some cool AI stuff behind the scenes to automatically go and get information about those and do all the tagging. So all I have to do is upload an image. But as you can see, it's a you know it, it's functional, right? I can I can add new items, I can see my recommendations and all that. But it's not very pretty. It just feels like it's missing something. So what I would love, first of all, is maybe some kind of welcome message here, so it personalizes the experience. Thankfully, I think I saw something over here on our snippet repo, this welcome time of day message. This is a pretty short snippet, but it looks like it's going to get in my username and also somehow with some PowerFX magic is getting the time of day and an emoji to go along with that. That's pretty sweet. So I think I want to use this. So I can actually just use this copy button right here where it has the YAML code. I could go back to my app here 
and I can just right click in a Canvas app if I want to use one of these snippets and I can say paste and there's a new paste code option and that's going to allow me to paste that YAML snippet and I can just reorder this. Let's say move that to the start and that's looking pretty sweet. I don't have to do anything. It's copied all of the power effects logic in the text input and it copied over this uh, text right from the YAML. So that's pretty cool. It's already sprucing up my app. Now, another thing though that I'd really like here is this gallery is pretty basic, right? It's just the standard look and feel of the gallery. And I uploaded pictures of all of my Lego sets. I really would like this to be more visually appealing. I think I spotted a snippet in that repo for a product gallery. So it had kind of like a cool look and feel that I was liking here. So I think what I'll do is I'll copy this snippet here and I'll see if I can make this work with my gallery. Um, let's see, I'll just delete this gallery because you know I want to start over with my snippet. I'm going to go into this container and we'll paste in this new code. And we'll see what happens here. Whoa, okay, so there's a lot going on, but I think I don't need quite all of this. So I'm going to just start deleting some of this stuff. I don't think I need this container. I really just want the gallery piece because there's a lot going on. With, uh, with this particular snippet here. And then I just, I think I need to connect it to my data. I see some errors. Let's see, it's, it's pointing to a sample data source of pizza specials, which is cool. Who doesn't love pizza? But I'm gonna change this to Lego inventories. That is my list here. And bam, it's already looking pretty sweet here. I don't need this either. I just want the gallery. And there we go. It looks like it's kind of set up. I can make some additional changes if I wanted to, to um, the fields that are showing. So let's see, I have the set name. That's really cool. Maybe for the product name instead of created on, let's actually make that the set name. Oops, there we go. And it looks like set number, cool, because I'm tracking the number and there's the set name and there's the price. So, wow, that's looking pretty sweet already all thanks to those snippets that we have there and there is so much more that we could go on and on doing with these snippets thanks to the snippet repo we can even have internal created um, snippets so i have a whole app dedicated to just storing a bunch of snippets so if i need a confirmation delete dialogue i can come in to my canvas app i can right click and i could say copy code if I want to share out one of these in my one app or if I want to share this in the repo, whatever I want to do, I can just copy the code and maybe add that into uh, my recommendation screen, for example. So I can add that right in here if I wanted this delete confirmation and paste that in from another app as well. So it's not just the sample repo. You can have your own internal resources with these snippets also. Lots we can do here, so many possibilities. You just saw the tip of the iceberg, but I think there's some more stuff that we can do here as well with maybe helping with documentation, um, you know, things that we can even integrate with Visual Studio to help us in writing some of these snippets. Is that right, David? Yeah, that is absolutely right, April. And so real briefly, we're also going to show you, you can find some of these snippets through the greater sample solution gallery as well. Uh, so we'll provide the links in the chat. But if you come into here, this includes all things under the sun Microsoft. And so if you're coming and you want to find some snippets, you could literally just come into the keyword area right here and type snippets. Uh, if you spell it right, snippets, there you go. Uh, but then it shows a variety of other things that you may or may not want. So you can come down to the filter. Uh, and for example, today we're focusing on Power Apps. So you can just select Power Apps. And when you do that, then you get things that are dedicated to snippets just in Power Apps. So for example, April created this SVG donut, which we'll talk about in a future call. Uh, and so I can go into that. I can see it on GitHub if I want. It opens it up. I can go into the actual source for it. Uh, and that's where you would get it. And as April showed, you can go in and you can select to copy the raw file. That's just a, a fancy way of saying, give me a copy of that whole file, right? And when I do that, then I could come over into VS Code and we can use VS Code for something. So here I've got VS Code or that donut file pasted in here. Uh, and you can use GitHub Copilot, which is pretty cool. So the first thing we want to do is let uh, VS Code know exactly what our file type is. So if you select down here, uh, nope, down there, down there, everybody. You select which language mode you want, you can actually tell it. So it may not recognize it right away, but a YAML is something that is uh, recognizable. So you do that, you see it kind of cleans it up. I'll go in and I'll say word wrap. And then right up here, I'm able to access GitHub Copilot. And so I'm gonna go over there and I'm able to start a new chat. And when you do that, you could use this for creating some documentation. I'll be real quick here, uh, we'll show, 
please provide me documentation because who writes who loves to write documentation right nobody so let's let the technology do it for us and what's cool is you'll notice well this isn't maybe documentation we were thinking of like in terms of comments that would go in the code but guess what this would be great in a user doc all this information here is pretty popular and valuable right it explains everything but what if you did want comments well i'll select new chat again and i'll just paste it i'm really kind of saying the same thing over and over uh can you please provide me code comments and instead of documentation. When it does that, it's gonna rewrite it and it's gonna do all of that in line. And you're like, well, that's great, okay, well, but maybe I actually want it to be a chunk of comments at the beginning. Well, again, we can get very specific with our conversation with Copilot, right? So I'll replace again a new chat, I'm gonna paste in here, and what I say is provide me an introductory comment block. So I'm being a little bit more specific about what I want. I'll hit that and then bam, it'll it'll provide me all of that. And so if I were to then come and put my cursor here at the uh, at the front of my code and I cover over some of these icons, that one right there says insert into insert at cursor. Right. So you can utilize all this functionality uh, to take advantage of stuff. There we go. It's in there. You can then put that into the repo, which, by the way, we are going to talk about in our next episode. Here are some resources for you. We're going to talk about how you can contribute to the repo. We're going to talk about how you can put these in a component library for scalability and reuse, because that's really when the best of both worlds meet together and you're able to reuse these across multiple apps in a scalable way. So you get a badge, by the way, when you contribute. So we're going to cover all those things, some best practices and improvement practices, all that kind of stuff in our next episode.